everyone. Welcome to YouTube channel Fat Answer Chemistry class. Today we will learn Loy balance which is used for the measurement of magnetic susceptibility. This topic is useful for BSc third year students and the chapter is Magnetochemistry. Myself Eki Patan from Department of Chemistry, Others Education Societies, Arts, Commerce and Science College, English. The magnetic susceptibility of the substance can be measured by means of Goya balance and this Goya balance was designed by French scientist L.G. Goya. Now before learning principle there are different types of substances like paramagnetic substance, diamagnetic substance, ferromagnetic substance. We know paramagnetic substances are the substances which are attracted by the magnets and they move from low magnetic field to high and diamagnetic substances are the substances which are repelled by the magnets and they move from high magnetic field to low magnetic field. So on the basis of this the principle of Goya balance is that the paramagnetic substance weight more and diamagnetic substance weight less in presence of external magnetic field. That means if you measure weight of paramagnetic substance it will feel higher and if you measure the weight of diamagnetic substance it will feel less in presence of external magnetic field. Now what is the construction of Goya balance? As the name suggests it is this is a balance. It just you can see in the diagram it is like a balance. You can see in diagram one side you have a pan another side the capillary suspended by means of wire. There are there is a electromagnet with two different two poles north and south pole and the substance is filled in the, into the capillary tube. Now working of Goya balance how it works. Initially what we do we shut down my electromagnet we don't supply electric current to electric electromagnet and we determine the weight of sample we determine the weight of the substance whose magnetic susceptibility is to be determined by keeping weight into the pan. Then, then we start electric current through the electromagnet. As the electric current starts into the magnet, magnetic field is developed around the capillary tube. Now if the substance is paramagnetic, the cylindrical tube will be pulled down. You can see in the diagram, the magnetic tube is going close it is attracted by the electromagnet and if the is diamagnetic the cylindrical tube will be pushed upwards you can see the diamagnetic substance is present in the capillary and uh, it is going away from the magnetic field now hence in case of first in case of paramagnetism paramagnetism some extra weight will have to add into the pan to balance it as well as in case of diamagnetic substance, some weight we have to remove from the pan to restore the balance. So for calculation part, the magnetic force which is acting on the specimen taken in the cylindrical tube due to applied magnetic field H is given by F is equals to 1 by 2 into chi minus chi A into bracket close A H square where chi is the volume susceptibility or magnetic susceptibility of the specimen chi A is the volume susceptibility of the air H is the strength of applied magnetic field and capital A is the area of cross section of the tube. Now let delta M be the change in the mass of the specimen then the force acting on the specimen due to gravitational force gravitational pull will be F is equals to delta M into G. Now when the situation is of balancing when the both pans in the balance, balancing situation we can write from equation number 1 and 2 as delta M into G is equals to 1 by 2 into chi minus chi A into A H square say it as equation number 3 where G is the acceleration due to gravity the value of chi A that is volume susceptibility of air as 
chi a is equal to 0 0.03 into 10 to the power minus 6 and the values of delta m, g, a and h are known. By using equation number 3 we can calculate value of chi that is volume susceptibility of the specimen. In the above calculation the absolute values of field strength h and a are required. Now however the necessary of measuring h and a can be eliminated. You can avoid measuring capital H that is magnetic field strength and A. If the experiment is first performed with the substance of known susceptibility using the same magnetic field and the same cylindrical tube for the experimental specimen. Generally we use water as a standard substance for this. Now what we do initially we have a specimen. The specimen uh, capillary tube is filled with the specimen and its weight is determined and you can write equation as delta ms into g is equal to 1 by 2 into chi s minus chi a into a square say it as equation number 4 then we fill water into the same capillary and find out the difference in weight before and after application of magnetic field we get equation as delta mw into g is equal to 1 by 2 into chi w minus chi a into a square say is as equation number 5 thus equation 4 and 5 are obtained thus dividing equation number 4 by equation number 5 we get delta ms into g divided, divided by delta mw into g is equal to 1 by 2 into chi s minus chi a into a square divided by 1 by 2 chi w minus chi a into a square where if you see this equation g g and a square a square get you can eliminate the use of finding an h from the experiment thus by using these you can easily calculate the magnetic susceptibility of the there are several advantages of this method measurement on metal or alloys are very easy very simple by this method. The sample has only to cast to shape or to cylinder or capillary tube. The magnetic susceptibility of the powdered samples can also be determined by packing sample into the gas capillary and lastly making correction for the glass which is used. And if the sample is used is liquid it is very easy to measure by the use of capillary with good accuracy. There are some disadvantages of this method. The guy balance guy method for the determination of magnetic susceptibility is not useful to determine magnetic susceptibility of the gas or vapor samples. Another disadvantage is the guy method cannot be conveniently used to determine magnetic susceptibility at elevated temperature of the range of 400 to 500 degree centigrade due to convention current to the convention heat and the Goya method is not useful if there are some traces of ferromagnetic substances present because it errors may arise due to very very small amount of ferromagnetic impurity present in the specimen and if it affects results dramatically thank you for watching subscribe channel and like